So as this is the second Friday of this year, uh, we are still in the first week, um, but in the second Friday, um, and uh, Lord has been continuously uh, been gracious to us, to all of us. Uh, He's been speaking to us uh, right from the watch night service um, uh, very strongly, uh, <clears throat> uh, giving us encouragement and also instructions um, for us uh, for this year. And also he has uh, strengthened us uh, by his word, uh, by his word and also his promises. So uh, we, thank, uh, we thank for all the provisions that he has been uh, giving it to us uh, by his grace and uh, uh, let's uh, turn our Bible to Exodus chapter 17. I will read from verse 1 to verse 7, Exodus chapter 17. So if you can turn your Bibles to Exodus 17 and uh, if you can read uh, um, uh, aloud um, and I will read it. Um, let's go to it. All the congregation of the people of Israel moved on from the wilderness of sin by stages, according to the commandment of the Lord, and camped at Rephidim. But there was no water for the people to drink. Therefore, the people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. And Moses said to, him, said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people grumbled against Moses and said, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt to kill us all our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, Pass on before the people, talking with you, some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock at Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water shall come out of it, and the people will drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel, and he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah because of the quarreling of the people of Israel and because they tested the Lord by saying, is the Lord among us or not? So um, we can study uh, when we meditate upon this, the whole verses that we just read, we have so many things to learn. Um, and especially um, for the sake of the time, we will uh, meditate this time, uh, verse 7. And he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah because of the quarreling of the people of Israel and because they tested the Lord by saying, is the Lord among us or not? Shall we look to the Lord in prayer? Heavenly gracious Father, Holy God, merciful God, almighty God, the maker of heaven and earth, the Lord who is the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the Lord who is the holiest of the holy, fairest among 10,000, the Lord who is the creator of everything. By you, everything has been sustained, O Lord, by your power of, of your word. I thank you, Lord, for blessing us one more time. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to come before your saints and to share the word that you have given to me, Lord. Lord, uh, hide me behind the cross. When I open the mouth, fill me, Lord, with your words and fill me, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. Lord, uh, help us, Lord, uh, open our eyes, open our ears and open our heart so that we may see, hear and uh, understand the mysteries hidden in the word, O oh Lord, so that we may hear it and take heed to, to it, O oh Lord, as an instruction and warning and also apply it to our daily lives. Bless this uh, word, bless this session, bless this time, O Lord, so that we may go out, out, out of it, O Lord, with our soul completely filled and satisfied. I ask all of this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we read the verse, uh, verse 7. 
So we know the context of it, as we know that uh, uh, this chapter speaks about uh, the famous journey uh, that Israelites are taking uh, out of Egypt and uh, they are on their way towards uh, the promised land. And uh, this journey symbolizes um, the, their uh, redemption from uh, uh, the redemption from uh, the uh, you know the slavery and the bondage they were suffering from, and uh, also the the whip of the lash and physical suffering, and also um, and it also spiritually talks about um, uh, our spiritual journey uh, from which Lord has taken us out, and um, on we are also on the on our way to. Uh, on our way to, uh, you know, uh, becoming like Christ. And uh, along the way, we also are facing uh, similar situations uh, spiritually. Um, and also uh, while we are in the flesh, we are uh, receiving and uh, we are experiencing the difficulties. So, so, in, uh, so we, we can see here that uh, people are uh, testing and complaining um, Moses, um, and they are actually, it says in, in, on your footnote, if you can observe, Masa means uh, testing and uh, Meribah means quarreling. So we see that, so we see, we see that here, um, uh, the similar instances, uh, similar experience has been described in uh, Psalm 78. Um, we see that in the Psalm 78, verse 15. So when they, the similar experience have been described by both Moses and David. Um, we can see here in Psalm 78, verse 15, he split the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink abundantly as from the deep. He made streams come out of the rock and caused waters to flow down like rivers. So when, uh, when we go back to Exodus 17, we can see that uh, Moses, according to the instructions given by the Lord, um, he, he, struck, he struck the rock and water came out of it gushing. And all of them have, were able to drink and uh, the waters passed like to like the rivers. So, so how do we see Christ here? Um, how does it apply uh, to us um, in our lives? So, uh, so what does it mean? Um, here, there are two clues um, given to us. One is uh, by the place names Masa and Mariba, which we are going to be studying uh, in this uh, session. Um, but before that, uh, we also, um, so what is this um, rock? It, the significance of rock speaks about the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And we see that uh, Paul mentioned that in 1 Corinthians 10. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 10. And uh, we can read the verses uh, two to five. They were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. So we see here that um, it is very, pretty clear that it, uh, the Lord might, uh, the, the rock signifies uh, the Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, because he was being smitten once and through him came, you know, the, uh, the, the water and the blood in the water. So we see that uh, when we look at the, the terms Masa and Mariba, so it defines us that what what they have what they actually did. Um, so when we see here, they were actually uh, complaining to God, uh, to Moses 
instead of uh, going to the Lord. So we see here, uh, they, faced, uh, they also faced a similar situation um, in the past. So what, they, what, should have they, what should they have done in this situation? Because this is not the first time that they were in this situation. We see that in Exodus uh, 15, the previous chapter, um, they had a similar instance uh, at Mara. Uh, what happened there was, uh, as you all know, uh, the water was there, but uh, when they uh, drank, when they drank from, uh, in it, it was bitter. So they com they they complained, and they and, and Moses uh, uh, was able to uh, reach out to God, and God, according to instructions given by God, uh, Moses uh, um, threw the tree uh, into the water, and uh, the water became sweet. So they had a similar situation in the past. So even this time, they should have um, they should have waited upon God in prayer, and uh, they should not have complained it. So many times uh, we also uh, face may come into difficult situations, and uh, we may not, uh, and uh, we may at that time we may not remember that we have a. God who can do all things. For him, everything is possible. And whatever may be the circumstances or whatever may be the difficulties we have, uh, in the past, God has delivered us. And we may, we may forget that in some instances, uh, in, in difficult moments when we come uh, to that situation. So here, uh, uh, we can learn from what people of Israelites have done because uh, it is actually a lesson for us um, to wait and obey and to pray. And we can also see that in uh, uh, Psalm 77, verses 11 and 12. Let's go to Psalm 77. Can someone read it? Uh, Psalm 77, verse 11 and 12. I will uh, meditate that, also uh, of so all that, the words. Before that, we can actually uh, go through um, verses uh, 4, 5, 6, and then 11 and 12. Thou foldest my eyes walking, waking. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I have considered the days of old, the years of ancient times. I call I call to remembrance my song in the night. I commune with my own heart and my spirit made diligent search. 11 and 12, no? What's, what's 11 and 12? Yeah. I will remember the words of, of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. I will meditate also of, of all thy words and, and talk of thy doings. Thank you, brother. So we see here the psalmist, uh, when he is in trouble, he could not uh, speak to God in prayer because uh, that all the troubles were wearing him and he's not able to stand um, and pray and uh, he is unable to speak. So many a times uh, when the burden is very too difficult for us to handle, when, when we are in difficult times, when we come to pr prayer, we may not be able to pray um, with the right spirit and also uh, our heart is burdened. And we, uh, and here also uh, the psalmist is experiencing that same situation. And uh, if we see uh, verse nine, he is asking, probing uh, the Lord with questions. Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he, has he in anger shut up his compassion? So has his steadfast love forever ceased? So he is probing and questions. And then uh, when he remembered all the deeds that God has done, um, he is asked, he's actually, um, what's, what he's saying is he'll, he's trying to remember all the deeds uh, that, he, uh, that he has experienced from the Lord. And uh, he's pondering upon all the work and meditate on the mighty deeds. So many. Uh, so it is a lesson that we should also be 
uh, we should also remember what God has done for our lives. He has brought us out of uh, dominion of darkness and he has given us a wonderful salvation. And uh, above, and all, not only that, he has been co consistently speaking to us, uh, guiding us every day in, in his word and uh, he's ministering on to us. And also, um, he, whenever we come to him in prayer, um, he is answering our prayers when we ask him in accordance to his will. So it is a very good uh, practice for us uh, to be to note down all the wonderful things that God has done in our lives. So that when temptations or when difficulties come, we do not forget uh, what God has done in the past. And, and now, even in this trouble, he is able to deliver us. So it reminds us uh, uh, when we write down all the deeds, all the great works he has done for us, uh, it will remind us that uh, he will surely bless us and he will surely answer and he will surely uh, bring us out of this difficulty. And sometimes he will give us grace to be able to endure that uh, difficult times. So, uh, so if we do not um, remember all the words of the Lord, then what happens is uh, the unbelief creeps into us and that unbelief uh, will lead us into uh, sin, right? And uh, that we should not be doing it. Uh, that, I, just, that is what exactly uh, the, this, we just read the verses in Exodus. The people of Israel uh, grumbled against Moses and they complained and uh, they were testing the Lord indirectly. So even um, we see that also in Psalm 78 verse 40, 41 and 42. And in fact, we can read uh, verse 40, 41, 42. Psalm 78, 40, 41, 42. Uh, How often they rebelled against him in wilderness and grieved him in the desert. They tested God again and again and provoked the Holy One of Israel. They did not remember his power or the day when he redeemed them from the foe. Verse 44, uh, he turned their rivers to blood so that they could not drink of their streams. He sent them swarms of flies which devoured them and frogs which destroyed them. And in verse 43, we know that they have all seen uh, on the first hand how the Lord has uh, redeemed them how the Lord has uh, done great and mighty works um, before their eyes. They have, um, they have seen how the Lord has parted the Red Sea with their own eyes. They were able to cross the Red Sea and, uh, and when they crossed it, um, all the uh, Egyptian army have been killed, have been uh, devoured by power of God. So they saw all these and yet uh, when they came to this difficult situation, they did not remember um, God of what they have done in the past. So that is the reason we see in Exodus chapter uh, 17 that they were quarreling and uh, quarreling with Moses and asking him to uh, give them a water to drink. Instead, they should have uh, prayed to God and. Uh, uh, waited upon the Lord because he is the one who um, who is asked, given the instructions for them to go and uh, into the wilderness and he was the one who's been uh, speaking to, uh, to uh, uh, through Moses. So they are in the will of God. We see that uh, very clearly in uh, verse 1 of chapter 17. We see here all the congregation of the people of Israel moved on from the wilderness of sin by stages according to the commandment of the Lord and camped at Rephidim. So we see that uh, they are under the will of God. So if they are in, under the will of God and uh, according to the instructions they are following, the Lord is the one who is going to provide them everything. So, uh, so that is a clear instruction that uh, we should uh, take heed uh, according by the experiences of uh, what Israelites have done. So we, we also see that uh, in 
Similarly, we have we can see that in Psalm 106 also mentions the same thing. Uh, in verse 21 and 22, Psalm 106, verse, uh, verses 21 and 22. Christ forget God, their Savior, which had done great things in Egypt, wonders works in the land of Ham, and terrible things by the Red Sea. Yes, thank you, brother. So, um, in Psalm 106 and Psalm 78, uh, uh, it's, it's talking about the same thing so that uh, they have forgotten what God has done in their lives uh, right before their eyes. Even then, uh, uh, they did not make any conscious effort to uh, rely upon God. Instead, they uh, murmured and uh, complained. Uh, and they went to uh, Moses uh, and asking him for the water. So we also, uh, it is very important that we, we should record all the good things that God has done in our lives. And it will help us uh, in present and also in future situations. So if you have a journal, um, if you're, I'm sure everybody is writing uh, notes um, when you're hearing the word of God and you, if you have a journal, uh, you can keep a record of all the things God has done right from the beginning. So I, um, for, I started doing that. Um, and uh, this is what I have done uh, to write down all the uh, things that God has done uh, right from the beginning. So if, it gives you an um, end and I'm pretty sure that I have forgotten a few more, few things here and there, uh, but at least I was able, um, you know, I was able to capture everything um, that God has done. And, um, and it is a very good exercise. In fact, uh, it is, it gives us um, a tremendous confidence. Uh, and uh, so, so that we can, whenever we face any difficult situations, we might be, you know, we will, uh, ponder upon those good things that Lord has done to us and he will, as he is faithful, he will also do it. He will never leave us, nor forsake us. So we saw that. Um, so here, um, the second encouragement uh, that we get from this uh, verse we, re we just now read is from Exodus chapter 17, um, <clears throat> is that uh, the, they, they are under the will of God. So we can trust God in every provisions uh, for all the provisions uh, uh, that he, we will definitely get uh, through him. So the next thing we can talk about is uh, the Mariba. What is uh, Mariba means is quarreling. So we see that uh, they are quarreling with uh, Moses. So Moses was in fact was um, identified that uh, when Israelites came to him, he said in verse two, why do you quarrel with me? And why do you test the Lord? So, so um, we see that here. So we cannot, uh, so we see here that instead of uh, uh, Israelites are talking to, you know, um, depending on God, asking the Lord for, for the help, they in, fa uh, they in fact are, were quarreling with Moses and uh, they, he, Moses was also, has, has been very um, uh, patient with them uh, so far. And uh, it was very insulting for him. They insulted him by saying, why did you bring us up out of Egypt to kill us, and our children and our livestock with thirst? So this is, a um, and this is a man of God um, who been uh, commended by the Lord himself that he is the meekest of all. And, uh, and we see that uh, uh, Moses uh, dedicated his life for the people of Israel. Uh, he gave up all the positions and he gave up uh, the position of uh, being next to Pharaoh. And he chose to be um, doing the will of God by sacrificing everything, you know, uh, by, uh, he allowed himself to be mistreated instead of uh, 
uh, enjoying the pleasures of the sin. So we see that in uh, Hebrews 11 and also uh, even Stephen uh, in his uh, um, account, uh, he said about Moses that Moses was the most powerful man. He was uh, full of wisdom and knowledge and he was a mighty, he was a mighty man. So we see that here um, in Hebrews 11, um, let's go to Hebrews 11. So Hebrews 11, uh, verse uh, 25. Choosing rather to suffer afflictions with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. And 26. Uh, he considered the reproach of Christ greater than wealth of wealth than the treasures of uh, greater wealth than treasures of Egypt but he was looking to the reward so we see here how uh, Moses uh, um, was trying was being the man of God was has been sacrificed um, his, his entire life uh, by leaving his family out and uh, he was uh, leading the Israelites to the promised land according to the instructions of God so so Moses, even though um, he was being provoked, he did not anger. He did not uh, become angry and he did not sin. And uh, instead he uh, went to the Lord and, uh, you know, and submitted all the supplications to the Lord um, about all, for all the provisions. Um, they did, he did not sin. Um, even though he, he, be, he, was being, he was being tested and also being provoked by the Israelites uh, every now and then. So we see that here from Meribah, um, we talked about uh, the quarreling. Um, instead of uh, quarreling and uh, instead of um, grumbling, we should always uh, go to the Lord and pray. And uh, he is the one who is going to provide us um, what, whatever that we need. So next one we talk about, uh, we can see here masa means testing or tempting. It also says tempting in the footnote. Um, we see that uh, uh, from the life of Jesus Christ in Matthew 4, Uh, in Matthew 4, uh, verse, uh, verse 6, 7. So angel, we see that here, um, uh, the Satan is tempting the Lord uh, when, uh, when he was in the wilderness. Um, and uh, he was, and he was um, misquoting the word. He was twisting the uh, promise that was given by the, law, by the, by the father to the son. Um, and um, it says here, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you. And on their hands, they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. So we see um, in Psalm 91, if we go there and keep your uh, footmark, bookmark there for Matthew's Matthew 4 and 6, 7, and we go to Psalm 91. Um, he was actually, Satan was actually quoting uh, Psalm 91, which is uh, written for uh, Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, we see that here, the actual promise uh, was given to Lord Jesus Christ was that because you have, verse 11, 12, 13. Um, For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands, they will, bear, they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. So we see here uh, Satan twisting the, and ignoring the, the, uh, the obedience part. The obedience part is that uh, to guard you in all your ways. 
if you see here Matthew 4, uh, verse 6, he did not, he skipped the, the, that part. And uh, after saying he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands, they will bear you up. So, so many times we, we are being tested uh, and testing, we should not uh, uh, test the Lord. And that's what it says here. Um, and Jesus replied it uh, by saying, you should not put the Lord your God to test. And testing is prohibited um, by the, by the you know by the lord we, we also see that in deuteronomy 6 uh we see, when we go to deuteronomy 6 verse 16 you shall not put the lord your god to test as you tested him at massa which is um, which brings us back to exodus 17 that it is very clear that it's a Lord's command that we should not test. And uh, uh, we, and many times uh, in our lives also, we, we ask the Lord and, uh, and we, can, we should not say that, um, you know, um, I will do this uh, prove um, and I will give up my life or I will jump out of uh, the mountain. Lord, if you are the Lord, really God, Prove, me, prove to me that you are the God. We should not say that. We should not tempt the Lord that way. Um, so, so here we see that Israelites did not wait upon the Lord patiently. They demanded uh, God's, uh, they demanded the uh, provision, uh, what they are looking for in their own time. And um, we see that here um, that God does not do like that. I mean, we when we are under the will of God, we should uh, keep on um, uh, following, keep on uh, doing our duties. Our duties is, is to um, fear the God and uh, um, obey his commandments and do our day-to-day uh, -day, um, responsibilities um, um, by faith and with uh, uh, diligence. And then God will uh, provide us everything that uh, we need in the right time so and God did not when they were when God was taking them to through the wilderness um, he did not promise them that they will not face any kind of difficulties what he promised them was uh, the promised land that one day they will enter into the promised land so they forgot the uh, the destination there uh, instead they were focusing on the problem that they have. They were thirsty and they were, uh, they did not find water and they, they complained to Moses. And so many a times we also fall into the same situation and we, we can see here that we should not test the Lord. We, we should not complain and murmur. So, and all the, and God will allow these circumstances in our lives uh, to transform us, to build us up and to also enable us to uh, learn uh, spiritual lessons. So whatever the God allows us, it is for our good. So we should uh, trust in the Lord and uh, continue our, our faith in him. So we see, we see a wonderful promise that uh, God has given in Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. So we see we, it is very well known verse here. Uh, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans, were, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. So, so whatever we might go through, we might be going through in, in our present life, present day-to-day -day life, um, Whatever may be the circumstances, we should always trust in the Lord and uh, wait upon him. And uh, we should prayerfully, we should wait upon him. And uh, many a times uh, we, we fail sometimes. And uh, it's from, from this, uh, uh, from the life of Israelites, we can learn a lot. Uh, how they have uh, crumbled and uh, 
and uh, tested a lot. So, and the, and finally, when we look at uh, Exodus 15, sorry, Exodus 17, they also said uh, something about uh, in the last part of the verse seven, they said, uh, is the Lord among us or not? So, of course, the Lord was with them all the time uh, by the by the pillar of cloud in the daytime and in the, by the pillar of fire. We see that God was was always with them, and here they are saying that it's completely opposite. You know, um, is the Lord among us or not? So we should not uh, be complain. We should not be complaining that way, and uh, and we also see that in uh, Matthew. Uh, Matthew 8, when Jesus rescued them from the storm. Um, let's go there, Matthew 8. Matthew 8, uh, verse 23 to 27. And when he was entered into ship, his disciples followed him, and behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him, and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he said unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose, and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds of the sea obey him? Yeah, thank you, brother. So we see here that um, they, um, when the disciples were on the boat and Jesus was also there, uh, Lord Jesus was also there. And um, when the storm came, they did not depend on, uh, went to the Lord immediately. They tried to work themselves out and try to fix the issue uh, or, the, uh, or the difficulty. But, and they, and when they, thought it was not possible with them then they reached uh, then they went to the lord and um, and they were actually uh, asking him to uh, save them because they are perishing so we should not be that way um, we should always be trusting the lord uh, completely and without uh, you know without a grumbling and without murmuring and uh, without testing him and also uh, that we should always seek him uh, with all our heart mind and soul by faith and we should and uh, the lord will uh, provide us all the provisions that whatever that we need in the right time may the lord bless this uh, message thank you brother yeah let's pray <clears throat> Oh, gracious Lord, our loving and living Heavenly Father, we thank you, praise the worship of Lord Father, for this evening. Of the Lord speaking to us from Book of Exodus, chapter 17, that the incidents, Father Lord, took place in the desert, in the wilderness, Father Lord, with the Israelite people. Thank you, Father, for reminding us, Father Lord, to have, Father Lord, in our own journey of this life, that, Father Lord, the Places of Masa and Mariba, Father Lord, they come. And Lord Father, we grumble and we, Father Lord, we tempt, uh, Father Lord, we doubts, uh, unbelief, all this, Father Lord, comes in our life. But we pray, Father Lord, that we may always trust, Father Lord, upon our loving Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, who is our rock, who is our rock of our salvation. And we may trust him, Father Lord, because we see, Father Lord, the how wonderful way that Father Lord provided the water from the rock. But the people of Israel, they, uh, Father Lord, where they complain and they grumble and they tempted whether Lord can uh, furnish the table, can Lord can provide the water, our, our cattle, then we all are going to die of thirst. And so wonderful way, Father Lord, as Moses was uh, spoke, uh, he struck the rock and the uh, Father Lord, the water came. 
And as Paul reminds us, Father Lord, that that rock was Lord Jesus. And the water came and Father Lord, they drank and the water followed them. All Father Lord through that wilderness journey. Yes, Lord Father, you were Father Lord smitten on behalf of us, for us, Father Lord, so that Father Lord, we could have eternal life and the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father Lord, for this uh, great Father Lord lesson that we have learned. That Father Lord, we may not grumble, we may not complain. And uh, Father Lord, we shouldn't attempt, we should not have any doubts. Father Lord, because Lord, you have already won the victory for us. Your Father Lord won the victory on temptation. So that Father Lord, we can trust you. We can trust you, Father Lord, on every occasion. And we pray, Father Lord, this evening, the Lord forgive Father Lord where areas where we have tempted Father Lord, areas where you have Father Lord grumbling and complaining. Father Lord, when the things are not going our way. Instead, Father Lord, we pray that thou will help us that we may trust you, Father Lord. Increase our faith. The disciples came, Father Lord, same way, during the time of storm, that Master, save us, we perish. Oh Lord, you were right there. Yet, Father Lord, they were, Father Lord, uh, just they just forgot completely. And when they were not able to do anything, they came to you. And the people were so much amazed, Father Lord, when the wind and the storm, they obeyed thy voice. Lord, all this miracle that has gone before us, or we should keep before us, Father Lord. And Father Lord, we may, Father Lord, as the diff those difficult situations come in our life, we may trust you, Father Lord, in every situation. So give us, Father Lord, that trusting spirit. Or we come to you, Father Lord. In our patience, Father Lord, we may wait patiently, Father Lord. Learn to, Father Lord, to bring to you, come to you, Father Lord, humbling ourselves. Come to you, Father Lord, in a prayer. Come to you, Father Lord, in the fellowship of the church. And, and Father Lord, bring the burden, Father Lord, uh, in the church. And pray, Father Lord, for the things that we need and the difficulties that are in our life. We may learn, Father Lord, to pray, trusting you. And knowing, Father Lord, that thou art faithful God, thou art our prayer hearing and prayer answering God. And so, Lord, in this coming year, thank you, Father, for it right in the beginning of the year, you have taught us this very important lesson. There's a whole year before us, Father Lord. And there may be many challenges, many difficulties, Father Lord. Many things will become. In all the situations, Father Lord, that will help us. That we may trust you, Father Lord. Our faith may grow stronger and stronger. And also, Father Lord, we may make note of all these victories that are won. Then, our Father, we may remember. Go back and remember, Father Lord, areas where the where those prayers that has already been answered. And the areas, Father Lord, where you come through us, that we may be strengthened, Father Lord, in the days to come. Thank you, Father, for this, um, uh, Father Lord, very encouraging, Father Lord, Bible study of Masa and Mariba. Yes, Lord Father, these are going to come in our life. And so, Lord Father, thank you for preparing us that we may, Father Lord, not to tempt you, not to question you, but Father Lord, to simply trust you, Father Lord, trusting in the Almighty God, trusting, Father Lord, in your provision, trusting you, Father Lord, in your forgiveness, trusting in you, Father Lord, in your compassion and in your long suffering, Father Lord. So Lord Father, be with us, lead us and guide us. Thank you once again, Father Lord, for um, Exodus chapter 17. Continue, Father Lord, to speak to us. Let these words, Father Lord, take deep root, Father Lord, in our lives. Also from Psalm 78. And also, Father Lord, even the life of Moses. How, oh, Father Lord, he, Father Lord, uh, endured, Father Lord, all this hardship, Father Lord, along with the people of Israel. And how, Father Lord, he was, uh, he loved them so much, Father Lord, that, Father, though he was angry many times, but yet, Father Lord, how much he pleaded for them. How much, Lord, Father, interceded for them. And, Father, we know that how he sent Aaron in the book of Numbers, Father Lord, to run, Father Lord, with the, with the censor, because, Father Lord, the, 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 the anger was already kindled against the people of Israel, and many people have died. And Aaron, Father Lord, quickly runs, putting the coal, burning coal, and the, and the, uh, and the mixture, Father Lord, of the incense mixture. 
and intercede, Father Lord. And how, Father Lord, he was able to stop the, the anger of thee. And so, Lord, Father, we also learn to pray, Father Lord, in our difficult situation. Lord, be with us. Lead us and guide us, Father Lord. Thank you once again, Father Lord, for teaching us this evening. Help us, Father Lord. So, so with thanksgiving, Father Lord, we offer this prayer, the most highly exalted name of our soon coming Lord and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Now the grace of our loving Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, and the eternal love of God, and the fellowship and the communion of the Holy Spirit may abide with us, with all his people in all the places, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Amen.